yes? Right, yes, uh, yes. As Muslims, we believe in the second coming. Oh, yeah, so yeah. that is, in that case, he's, he's specially chosen and anointed for that pur purpose, which is, <coughs> so yeah. Okay, okay. So yeah, we, I mean, so, look. So when, okay, so, so you believe Jesus will come again? Oh yeah, definitely. And what, um, I mean, so what, what is Jesus' relationship to the pro Prophet Muhammad? We believe that all prophets and messengers are specifically chosen by God Almighty. Yeah. So just like Prophet Muhammad is like the last messenger yes. and the prophet, we believe that Jesus also had a significant and important role, like I told you. He has a two-part mission. Yes. Part one, for the Bani Israel, for the children of Israel. Part two, when he'll come as, a, as from the Ummah of Prophet Muhammad. So even though his initial position was that of a prophet and a messiah, when he comes back, he'll follow the Sharia of Prophet Muhammad. Mm. So he'll come as that, not as... I see, yeah, right. Yeah. Not, not as, like, Prophet gone and then Prophet come back again. But he's, he still has a significant role. Like, one of his main role in the second coming is that he'll kill the Antichrist, Antichrist. or the Dajjal. Right. Yeah? But I want to ask you, I mean, why do you as a... Because you said you're a Christian, I'm assuming you believe Jesus to be God. Yes, yes. Yeah, why would you consider a human as God? When he never claimed to be Almighty God, when he always worshipped and prayed to God Himself. Mm, yes. I mean, obviously, there's, there's a, the doctrine of the Trinity is a sort of very sort of historically. Uh, well, That's that from the doctrine, church. Or is that a development? That's the question. Because it was not there in the first century. It, if the Trinity was there, yeah. there would not be any need for any councils. In fact, not only the first century, in fact, if you look at the entire Bible, Old and New Testament, no one advocated the worship of a triune God. I, in ancient Judaism, there was actually uh, a, a theology of a Godhead among uh, pre-Christian Jews. So show me in the Bible who worshipped such a God. I think I, I think you can actually find in in, uh, in Second Temple Jewish. John, I'm not, talking, I'm not talking about outside the Bible. I'm talking about the Bible itself, because if, if this is such an such an important part of, of your belief, yeah, you know, yeah. to believe in a triune God, surely it should be in the Bible, right? Well, they is. would include everything, but the most important thing, why? No, but it, but it is. It's, it's there. It's, um... So show me someone who did that. I mean, there must be at least one example of any prophet or a messenger who worshipped a triune God himself or at least advocated for the other people to do so. Because not even Jesus did that. Not even his apostles did that. So where... The, the head the, of Christ yes. is God, the Father. Because Jesus is the head of man. And man is the head of woman. So there automatically is a hierarchy. Yeah, yeah. If your salvation is based on something, it must be clear and ambiguous because on that day you yeah. have a get out card. Well, it wasn't clear. Okay. So it has to be clear, not ambiguous. Yeah. Or it open to a different interpretation. Okay. When you look at the New Testament, do you believe this is scripture? Yeah. Why? Because when Paul said, inspired, the new scriptures wasn't even in existence at the time. Yes, yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, New Testament. obviously. New, yeah. I think, uh, so we, obviously the apostles, you know, like Paul and, you know, the 12 disciples. Yeah. They, um, we, we, we take the, their pronouncements as scripture because we believe that as, a, as people who knew Jesus personally mm -hmm. and lived with him and walked with him, that therefore, Brother. therefore that they have yeah. the, the authority to write scripture. Yeah. No, but even you they... know the two of us. Yeah. You know me for three years, and you know him for 19 years. Who do you know more? Um, sure, I know him then. More. So, his disciple, they only yeah. know him for three years. And how old was Jesus when he died? So when you know someone for 33 years, and only three years, you know nothing of the person. No, but if you, if you witness the person perform miracles and raise people from the dead, and then resurrect himself from the dead... By whose permission? What do you mean? In the Bible, it tells you. Numericals by whose permission? By whose permission? Who gave him permission? Who gave him the power? Uh, so, so yes, that according to the Bible, not your what you're thinking. What what does the Bible actually say about the subject matter? Because it says the Father gave him the permission. 
yes, that's right, yeah, by, yeah. Does anybody give God permission? No, but you see that, you see in Christianity, you know there's a, there's a doctrine of kenosis. Yeah. That this is, this is the um, self-emptying of Christ. Sorry, self what? Emptying. Emptying. What did he empty himself of? Well, of, uh, <laughs> so, so basically, the incarnation, the incarnation yeah. of, of the Messiah yeah. in, in a man's body, mm -hmm. it's about God, for the sake of doing his salvific work, I, don't, I didn't ask you why he did it. I'm asking, what did he empty himself of? Oh. Well, to, like, uh, omnit omnipotent, uh, omnipotent power. You have the same problem I have. Yeah. Can God no, no, but it's not just omnipotence, yeah. is it? Yeah. What about Knowledge. all... Did he empty himself of the divinity? No. Okay, so then what did he empty? Just omnipotence? That's it? What about omniscience? Yes, I think so. I think he emptied, emptied himself of, of his omniscience. What about immortality? Uh, again, he was dependent and, com and completely entrusted uh, the matter of his resurrection to, to no, no. his father. Did, was, he was he immortal or not? Um, well, clear, like Jesus died because he confined himself to human. That means mortal. So he wasn't immortal. Just, just say it. Man. Come on. Let's not beat around the bush. No, no, no. Because immortal. you can't have it both ways. He's either immortal or he's not. Or you can't have it both ways. I, I, I think, I think he's immortal. I mean, it's okay. So who died on the cross then? No, even better than that, because yeah. I'm learning from you. <laughs> if he's immortal, there's two things that doesn't apply to an immortal being: resurrection, crucifixion. Crucifixion. Well, definition. Yeah. Crucifixion and resurrection, because death and resurrection doesn't apply to an to immortal. to an immortal being. Only to mortal. So, because does, both... Does it necessarily, though? Yeah, because no. the, 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 the definition... definition yeah, yeah. Exactly. What's the definition of, of, of immortal? Let's go somewhere in the shade, because we, yeah. we don't want to... We, we don't want to drench you. Because <laughs> these are the things that are... Sorry, guys, your cameras. Yeah, yeah. Yes, right. I'm not Mansoor, man. Come on. Slam. I've got all of them, yeah, yeah. But we haven't finished. We are continuing here. Resurrection and crucifixion only applies to someone like us. Yeah? I think here is good. It's dry here. Death is a separation of the soul from the body. Whatever dictionary you look at, you can pick up your phone, whatever dictionary you look at. Immortal, when God says, I am mortal, that cannot die because he's everlasting. Yeah. Yeah. He cannot even die for one second. Now, Jesus, according to Christianity, died and came back. So that shows, because we will die and we will be resurrected. Does it make us, does it make us God or immortal? It makes us mortal, not immortal. So, that, so now there are three things he's emptied himself of. Omnipotence, omniscience, and immortality. So what's left of God then? Nothing. <laughs> you can't affirm something because what you affirm that he's immortal that God is immortal. That negates that. Yeah. Resurrection and crucifixion does not apply to him. It's just common if you look at it objectively, it makes sense. I, uh, I I'm not I'm not sure I follow your philosophy of this. No, it's not philosophy. No, 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 but why? No, I have a question for you now. Okay. Yeah, go on. Okay, so, so Islam. Yeah. So Abrahamic religion, Mark three, let's call it. It's the third take on 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 the Abrahamic religion. Yeah. Not exactly, but carry on. I'll, I'll, I but want like, to. I want you to finish your point. Yeah. <laughs> I think but I my, think it's no, you're going. Yeah. But my my question is, is because you you were you b both seem like very against um, mystery. And, and the, the, mat, the matter of um, maybe the Christian Bible's yeah. ambiguity in certain areas. Not we. We are, we, we, we are against, the, we, we are against the fact that a human is God. Yeah. Allah Which, said we, that. Well, no, you, look at, you, you look at any scripture of the Abrahamic faith, which you just mentioned, none of them claim that a man can be God. No, but back again, I, I say that there is, and you can see in late Jewish writing, there is an emerging doctrine of the Godhead. 
and you can see this in the yeah, book. Yeah, but that's extra biblical. No, it's not. It's in the book of Daniel. What does it say? Well, you know the passage where in, the, in Daniel where it speaks about the Son of Man? Yeah. Uh, and all of the, uh, and where the Son of Man defeats the beast in the sea. Right. And then Yahweh arrives on his throne, on his enthroned. You see, right there, you have the Son of Man and Yahweh separate. Um, yeah, but son in, of, in that passage. When you say son of man, you're talking about a human, right? Well, this is this is the interesting thing Why? because it it anticipates the doctrine of the incarnation. No, it doesn't because Ezekiel was <laughs> called son of man yes. more times than Daniel used uh, son of man in his book. Yes, yes, yes. So but if is Ezekiel is son of man, is he God? No, he's not. Mm. So why the special pleading for son of man for Jesus? Because the, the language of Son of Man is taken up by the Messiah figure. You see, Son of Man yeah. is used by Ezekiel to emphasize his humanity. No, but the Messiah and figure was, always, was never to be worshipped by the Jews. Yeah. If you look at any of the Messiah, uh, the Messianic uh, prophecies, yeah. none of them indicate that the Messiah is one so, to be worshipped as God. God has always been, look at the first commandment. Okay, here is uh, the Lord God, your God, the Lord is one. Yes. And this is a clear indication as who that God is. It's always a singular, unique uh, entity which is talked about. Never a plurality of individuals or persons mm. like the way the 4th century doctrine of the church, uh, which is called the Trinity, uh, postulated. So what do you, what do you, this is a later development. Throughout the Bible, if you look at every prophet, none of them advocated the worship of a triune being. Come on, that itself speaks volumes. No, I, I, I think I think the doctrine emerges much later, and actually the doctrine, the, the the councils of the early centuries of the Christian Church, they are merely clarifying and uh, distilling what is actually already there in the scriptures. So why can't you show me a single explicit passage about anyone worshiping a triune God? Why are you struggling so far? Because I'm not a biblical scholar. You don't need to be. You brought up Daniel. You brought up X, Y, and Z. I'm sure if you brought up. If you had come across a single passage about anyone advocating a worship of triune God, you would have said it. Okay, well, how, how you don't about, need to be a scholar. How about the first chapter of John, the Gospel of John? Then where are the three in there? Okay, so like, uh, um, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. He was with God in the beginning. Okay. So this this word. Where's the Trinity there? Because the passage I'm looking for is something to do with the Trinity. What you have just mentioned is like only, even if I give you for the sake of argument, this is talking about two individuals, that still doesn't form the Trinity. Okay, okay, okay. So let's give me something explicit. Right, let's, let's Google it now then. Okay. Yeah, inshallah. Yeah. You got something? Guys, don't forget to subscribe to Dawawise. <laughs> I just see that one. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear that. <laughs> He's using his lifeline, call a friend. <laughs> Shall we get 50 50 while he's at it? How many people think a man can be God or a creation can be God? It's raining. Alhamdulillah, we had a lovely day today. Yeah. We had like five shahadas today, Alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. That's, um, that's progress at Speaker's Corner. I don't know yet, but inshallah she's inshallah. five and a half, I would say. <laughs> so basically, yeah. the doctrine of the Trinity refers to all of these New Testament passages here. Yeah, none of them mention the triune God. I can guarantee because I've read them all. And neither can you show me any of them. Because you oh, see, really? this, this is a reason when you have something as explicit as John 17, 3, yeah. where Jesus himself identifies only the Father as the only true God, then there is no room for anybody else to be the true God. He, he identifies one person as the true God, the only true God. Who is that? What, and he was speaking of his Father in heaven? Yes. So if Jesus says there is only the only true God is the Father, then do you have room for anybody else then? It's like John 3.16. Do you remember that passage? Let's, let, let's look up the, the one you said, John 17. 3. Yeah, you can, you can read it in context, no problem. Are you guys okay? Your cameras are okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so 
So he says, this is eternal life that they may know you, the you is yes. the Father, that, that uh, sorry, this is eternal life that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Mm. Okay, so the only true God here is who? Okay. Yeah. The Father, yeah? Yeah, yeah we'll finish yeah. quickly, inshallah. Yeah, and Jesus is the Christ. So he, he distinguishes between the two, between the only true God, the mm. Father, and Jesus Christ, mm. okay, the Messiah. Yes, yes. Now, this is an explicit passage. You know, there's no beating around the bush, no ambiguity here. It's precise and clear. But and it's, why would Christians then look at all the other no, ambiguous what, passages when you have something as explicit as this? How do you explain uh, Jesus before the Sanhedrin, where they, they ask him if he is the you know, Son of God, so, and he responds, so the it is as you say. Yeah, the Sanhedrin were against him, weren't they? They were the enemies of Jesus. Would you believe the enemies of Jesus or Jesus himself? No, but the words come from Jesus' mouth. Which words? They, they ask him, are you the Son of God? And he says, it is as you say. Yeah. Son of God. He responds in the affirmative. Yeah. So, right, right after aligning himself with the Daniel passage. Yeah, but Son of God is not God. G Adam is called the Son of God in Luke 3, 38. Right. David is called the Son of God. Ephraim is called Son of God. There are many sons of God in the Bible. Why would Jesus then have this special position of being God? You know, mm. when Jesus, you know, Jesus, when he, uh, when he was telling people, sorry, when people asked him, shall, whom shall we pray to? What was his response? Yes. It, it was the Lord's Prayer. And the Lord's Prayer begins with our, our Father. Father in heaven. Yes. Not our Father, Son and Holy Spirit in heaven. You see yes. what I mean? So even during your prayers, you're supposed to address only the only true God, that is the Father. Right. See what I mean? So throughout the Bible, Every prophet, every messenger addresses the Father as the only true God. Yes, in the first, um, uh, the first commandment. Uh, also, when Jesus was asked about the most important commandment, Mark 12, 29, he repeats the Shema mm -hmm. that, that Moses proclaimed first. Yes? Yes, yes. Shema Israel Adonai Elohinu Adonai Ahad. Yes? Mm -hmm. This, which he says that here is right, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Mm -hmm. Okay, who was that addressing? Just the Father. Not the Trinity. So please, as a Christian, I want you to take on board that if you look at the Bible objectively, yes, without this church doctrine from the fourth century, you will come to the understanding that everyone in the Bible worshipped only one person, and that is the Father, the God of Jesus Christ. Do you know Jesus had a God, by the way? He had a God. Yes. John 20, 17. If you got the Bible, look it up. Remember... When he, uh, when he says to Mary Magdalene, I've not yet uh, ascended. Yes, I go, he tells her to go to my brethren. Yes, and tell them that I go to my father and your father, my God and your God. Mm -hmm. So even the term father, you know, many yes. Christians use this as an object, objection that Muslims don't uh, believe that God is a father. The term father actually meant someone of higher authority. It's like the Arabic term called Rabb means the master, the one in authority, yes? Mm. So, you know, like in English, they say, um, uh, sorry, the, uh, the Lord of the manor, for example. It doesn't mean that he's actually the God of that particular house. Right. It just means like he's in authority. He's in charge of that manor mm. or that house. Similarly, there's an Arabic phrase which says, Rabbul, Rabbul Bayt, means the master of the house. Yes, we have this linguistic phraseology or, or linguistic idioms which actually have a deeper meaning than the literal meaning mm. like the son of God which you're, you're talking about or the term father. So when Jesus is saying that this is your father and also my father and he is also my God and he is also your God, the same entity, the father. So this unique son-father relationship is not just with Jesus but it also extends to every believer. Okay. Similarly, the God is not just of Jesus but also all the believers is their God as well. So Jesus is proclaiming again and again, just like every other messenger and prophet, that there can be only one true God, and that is his God, and the God of Moses, and the God of Abraham, and the God of all messengers, including Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yes, because Prophet Muhammad came with the same narrative, that there is only one true God. Yes, forget all, he was telling the Arab uh, idolaters at that time, the pagan Arabs of Quraysh, his, his tribe, mm. yes, that all these false gods, they are false. So do not worship them. 
do not associate them with the only true God. Mm. And that is the message of every believer. And if you look at the first commandment and Mark 12, 12, 29, the Shema, which Jesus repeats, it's identical. They all say the same thing. Worship that one true God. But then the church in the fourth century comes and says, oh no, it's the Trinity. When none of the messengers, none of the prophets, not even Jesus, not the apostles, in fact, not even Paul, none of them advocate the worship of a triune God. Although the, the way that Paul prays is often Trinitarian. Where did Paul ever pray in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit? He didn't. There was a baptism which happens or, yeah. or Jesus proclaimed in Mark 12, 29 about the baptism. But this baptism was never practiced by anyone in the Bible. You know, there are many other, sorry, many baptisms in the Bible. None of them use this formula of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, which only indicates one thing. It must be added later on is an interpolation. Otherwise, they would be rejecting the command, the direct command of Jesus Christ. And, and when they baptize, they baptize either in the name of Jesus or in the name of the Father. See what I mean? Mm. They wouldn't just reject Jesus' words. And that's the reason I believe that this, and even, even if you look at it linguistically, when he says baptize in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, it never says that the three are one. Because that's what the Trinity means. It just, doesn't just mean three persons, because that would be tri theism isn't it three gods um, yeah right, yeah right, right, so when you talk about the trinity it's not just three persons is that the three the three are one being mm. and nowhere is that dictated or advocated in the bible but anyway i think we should probably wrap up because i don't want their equipment expensive equipment sure, yeah, to yeah. be damaged okay. what's your name I'm Brett. Brett, yes, I'm yeah. Hashim. Very nice Hashim. meeting you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, hopefully when the weather is good next time, we might have yes. to, we might continue this another Sunday. But appreciate it. And uh, yeah. Um, okay. So if you got any questions, I mean, we got a channel called Dawa Wise. Okay. So you can email us, dawawise at gmail.com. Okay. Or maybe come back another Sunday. All right. And cool. we can take it from there. Thank yeah, you very much for your you. time. Yeah, thanks appreciate for it. Me. All right, thanks, guys. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.